when they get the marriage of their daughter and every, from everywhere they put the pressure on you that's coercion and when you face such coercion if you are kind of a normal ordinary person and even the grace of god has not made you extraordinary and it push you and push you and push you like that and then you are thinking why are they doing all this to me because you are saved because of your salvation and then you say i cannot bear this anymore either you give up the salvation and you say if it's for salvation this is too much and you lose heaven and you miss heaven or you don't give up uh, salvation directly you get out of where god has placed you he's placed you in that ministry he's placed you in that family he's placed you in a place of work and for the fire the heat is so much you say well if it's because of work i don't need money i don't want money. i don't want anything then you go out that's not right that's where god has put you or it is that you say anywhere i go everywhere i go this pressure is too much coercion then you say i get out of life when you get out of life that is the worst if you take any pill you take anything you swallow and you know once you take that overdose you are gone you go you think you are escaping from the coercion and the furnace and the fire of Nebuchadnezzar you are getting to the other fire hell fire that will be forever and forever whatever happens whoever coerces you whatever pressure they give you and however tired you may be just stay there never take your life and don't go out of the world into eternity because you say this is too much coercion should not push us to do anything look we're standing against sin and we're standing against evil and we're standing against the coercion and the pressure of the world and now we allow that coercion to make us commit the greatest of all sins to commit suicide that's murder thou shalt not kill if that happens you have allowed satan to drive you to the point you personally choose okay you are going to hell instead of staying here you will stay i said you will stay and god is faithful that will not allow you to be tempted or tried more than you are able and you will with the trial with the temptation make a way for you that you will escape you'll be set free in jesus name we're looking at three things here number one we're looking at the accusation against the godly companions before the furious babylonian nebuchadnezzar number two the accommodation of a gambling compromise by the fierce blasphemer uh, you know the it's okay i will accommodate you i, I know somebody can be foolish uh, sometimes your foolish intuition you are taking uh, i will give you another chance here is the way to gamble your soul and then to lose your soul if you will say you are sorry for the righteousness of yesterday of last week of last month you're sorry for the righteousness and the sanctification and the firmness of your past and now you turn around play it cool look all the jews are there you are not the only one that came from the jewish land from judah look at those other ones they are bowing down so if you reconsider and you have this gamble this gambling of a compromise well but if not if you are rigid if you are firm if you say here is where you stand the president said i will show you where i stand he stood for idolatry and anyone that would not worship that idol that fellow will be cast into burning fairy ponies that's the gambling he wants you he wants they he wanted them to get into you know when people are talking with you they may not talk with words they talk with action 
They may not talk with, you know, words. They talk with body language. They may not talk with you, with words. They talk with the fury in the face. And they're saying, slow down. They're saying, cool down. They're saying, change your mind. They're saying, gamble and compromise. They're saying, own them as your God and not look to heaven as the only authority over you. They call you to compromise. Compromise is gambling. You're gambling with your soul. But Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, well, not. They said, do what you want. You have liberty to build the fire. I have that liberty to get into the fire if you push me there. But you'll not get me to volunteer, to compromise, and to lose my soul. Let's be very careful of compromise. It's gambling, gambling with your soul. Number three, the affirmation of a glorious consecration by the fortified believers. Look at number one. Number one is the accusation against the godly companions before the furious Babylonian. Uh, you, you, you know the story? They came to report them. They said, there are three men in your kingdom. You have even promoted them to be here and there. But they worship not your idol. But let me remind you, Satan is behind all that kind of accusation. Satan wanted them to compromise. If they were not compromised, Satan wanted them to burn in the furry ponies. Hey, look at Revelation chapter 12. And I'm reading from verse 10. Revelation chapter 12. And we're reading from verse 10. It says, And I heard a loud voice saying, In heaven now is come salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ for the accuser of our brethren is cast down. The accusers will be cast down. I said the accusers will be cast down. The accuser of our brethren is cast down which accuse them before our God day and night. You should understand the person behind that accusation, I didn't do that. How could they say that about me? Check the records. I didn't even go after that. I wasn't there. The person, the personality behind that accusation is the devil. You will not cry for the devil. When they accuse you like that, and you didn't even know head or tail about, and they say, this happened, this happened. Why didn't they see other people? Why is it only this Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego? They were, you know, following. I see they were trailing them. Don't worry. The Lord will bring a great, great manifestation of power through the persecution you are going through in Jesus' name. We're looking at number two. Number two is the accommodation of a gambling compromise by the fierce blasphemer. They are told them, look at that in uh, Daniel chapter 3, reading from verse 14, Nebuchadnezzar speak and said unto them, Is it true, O Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, do not ye serve my gods, nor worship the golden image which I have set up. Look at verse 15. In verse 15, now, if ye be ready, if you reconsider, if you think about it again, you are young. If you think about your life and you think of what will happen now, if you don't surrender, if you don't submit, submit your will, take it away from the hand of God and make your will to be under my control. If you don't do that, but you can consider and you can think about it, uh, you, you have a lot ahead of your, your life, your happiness. Don't you want to be happy? Your joy? Don't want to be joyful? Do you want to be under my fury and my fierce countenance? Every time, don't you want, you want to show you some relaxation so that you can enjoy your life 
consider it consider it all the goals of god all the visions of god all the aspirations you have all the ambition you have if you are rigid like this i'll cut them short i'll cancel them you will not get to that place you want to get to consider it and compromise that's what he was telling them in life that's what happens to us what is threatening us don't you have a goal don't you have an ideal don't you have a destiny? Don't you have something you want to achieve on earth? Don't you want to be happy? Don't you want to have joy? Don't you want to have, uh, you know, health, strength? Do you want to be under this harassment, harassment every time? Consider, that's what they tell us. That's what they will tell you. But the consideration does not take in the factor of God. It does not take in the power of God, the prophecy of the Bible, the promise of the Lord. It does not take on the pleasure of the Lord. What does God want? What does God desire? And what does God demand? It doesn't take that, only that you think of yourself, that self-centeredness. And it's depravity that makes us to think only of my joy. I want to be happy. I want to be joyful. I want to be successful. I want to be this. And if I don't compromise with them, then I lose all that. That's depravity. You are self, you are self-centered. But if you say my hand, my destiny, anything I have, anything I will have, is in the hand of God. If they think they can make you unhappy, let them go ahead. If they think they can cut short your life, let them go ahead. But you've made up your mind, you're going to serve God and nothing will take that decision, consecration away from you in Jesus' name. And so he wanted them to compromise. Then he said in the middle of the verse, he said, But if ye worship not, ye shall be cast the same hour into the midst of the burning furry furnace. And who is that God? Their language sometimes will make believers afraid. They're so sure of themselves. This is what they can do. They can torture your life. They can torment your life. And they can make you miserable here on earth. And they say, okay, go ahead. You're a prayer warrior. You can pray. Go and pray. You depend on the promises of God. Oh, yes. Go and call the promises of God. You can fast. You can pray. And come out of this. Go and fast. Whatever number of this you want to fast. But we'll tell you. If you don't compromise, we'll finish your life. And that's why people fear, and that's why they cannot go ahead with their conviction. But they can do nothing. I want to hear a good amen. Nebuchadnezzar himself said later in chapter 4, They that walk in pride, God is able to abase. Look at the story of that man. The Lord abased him, even to the point of being like an animal to each grass. As Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they were still alive. They will be alive. All those threats, they mean nothing. They, they are serious, but let them go ahead and do it. God has the final say in your life. And so he said, who is that God that can deliver you out of my hands? What if they compromised? What if they said, this is going too far. Let's stop this scenario. It will mean that they compromise to lose their lives. In Mark chapter 8, Mark chapter 8, I'm reading from verse 36. For what? Shall it profit a man if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? If you compromise, if you agree with Nebuchadnezzar, if you bend to his image, if you become an idol worshiper, and then you lose your soul, what have you gained? Whatever you gained by the compromise for all eternity, 
your regret in verse 37 verse 37 or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul it tells us in proverbs chapter 29 verse 25 it says the fear of man bringeth a snare the fear of Nebuchadnezzar, the fear of Pharaoh, the fear of Herod, the fear of that man, the fear of that woman, the fear of conspiracy, the fear of suffering. All that fear brings us near. But whoso putteth his trust in the Lord shall be saved. Luke chapter 12 we're looking at verse 4. But I say unto you, my friends, be not afraid of them that kill the body. Like Nebuchadnezzar, that's all he could do. He could throw the body into a fire. And after that, have no more that they can do. Verse 5, in verse 5, but I will forewarn you, whom ye shall fear, fear him. These are the words of Jesus. Fear him, which after he has killed, has power to cast into hell. Yea, I say unto you, fear him. We're coming to number three here. Number three is the affirmation of a glorious consecration by the fortified believers. We're looking at Daniel chapter three, and we're reading from verse 16. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered and said to the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we're not careful to answer thee in this matter. They didn't say, O king, exalted king, flattering him. Believers should come back to the real faith. That we don't uh, flatter the people that in our hearts, we know that that's the cadmism. He doesn't love God. He doesn't accept our conviction serving God. And he doesn't go the way of the Lord. We know that. And then we flatter them. Or somebody gets into a position, and we know it's that fellow, that fellow could do something that could destabilize somebody's life. And then we write a letter of, you know, congratulation and solidarity and this. And that's, you don't believe that in your heart. That's hypocrisy. Don't allow the fear of man or the things that people might do. And because you are eager to protect your life by yourself and not thinking of God and God alone, you are flattering them, you are sending this and sending that unto them. No! Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered and said to the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we are not careful to answer thee in this matter. Look at verse 17. If it be so, we know that you are not under any control, you are not on any law, you, you don't listen to anybody, we can't talk to you, nobody can talk to you, but all the same, go ahead. If it be so, our God who we serve is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace. I want you to remember that this had never happened to anybody. This kind of trial, this kind of threatening had never happened to anybody. I want you to, I want you to know that this kind of situation had never arisen any time in history. That a king will threaten people like this, even if it never happened to anybody before. And you are the first one. God will make you an example of the manifestation of a miracle. If it be so, our God, whom we serve, is able to deliver us from the bony furry ponies, and he will deliver us out of thy hand, O king. But what if not? How do you respond to that? He will deliver us. But we don't know his plan. We don't know what he's going to do. What if he does otherwise? Verse 18. In verse 18, but if not, if all the prayer, God does not answer it in that direction. He answers it in this other direction. What if all the trusting and all the claiming of the promises, what if God does not answer it in this way to take away and to quench the fire? 
What if the fire keeps on burning? What are we going to do? All the same. Our faith, our trust is not in the, you know, suggestion that when we get to that fire, that fire will be quenched. That fire will go on and the fire will not burn at all. It may be the other way. God can preserve you inside that fire. Any fire that any man, any woman, any group of people, any fire that you make, God can preserve you. If you have been praying, God, quench the fire, remove the fire, put up the fire, whatever, um, dampen the fire. If God does not answer that way, does that mean we're going to succumb? We're going to compromise? We're going to say, I thought it would happen this way. Since it didn't happen that way, now I compromise never. Well, we're not compromise you will not compromise. If you are born again, you leave the result in the hand of the Lord. But if not, be it known unto thee, O King, that we will not serve thy gods, nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up. May God give every one of us that kind of fortified mind, courage, and determination, diligence, in Jesus' name. We're coming to point number three now. Point number three, the comportment and gracious composure despite the king's deadliness. We've read the passage already. We're looking at three points here. Three things. Number one, the calm courage of faith under fire. The calm courage of faith under fire. Courage does not tremble. Courage does not have the heart palpitating. Courage does not make a person looking up and there and looking for contact, somebody to contact and to talk to and Nebuchadnezzar so that this will not happen. When it comes persecution, when it comes threats, when it comes, the trial, you remain calm. If you have faith in the Lord, if you have left everything in the hands of God, that's God's business. That's what God will deal with. That's something for God to look into. My hand is not there. My mind is not there. And I can go to sleep. Like when Peter went to sleep, the previous day to the point Herod was to execute him. It wasn't, it didn't bother him. He just kept calm. And that's what the Lord wants us to have. When you have courage in the Lord, when you have faith in the Lord, you are calm. And you leave the result in the hands of the Lord. You have calm courage of faith under fire. Number two is the constant conviction. You can examine your conviction. Did I do wrong? Was that all right? Should I have worshipped idol? No. Was it wrong to worship idol? Yes, it was wrong. My conviction is God alone is who I should serve. You cannot serve God and man, God and monarch, God and mammon. You have to serve God and God alone. You shouldn't be so gentle and so humble that you surrender your soul into the hand of any monarch, any man, anyone. And so they kept their conviction constant and they were fearless despite his fury. Number three, the clear consecration and faithfulness to the faithful. He is the faithful. And if we're serving him, he deserves our faithfulness to the faithful. Is the faithful one. He's never disappointed us. Why should we disappoint him? He's never failed us. Why should we fail him? And he has never rejected us and abandoned us in difficulty. Why should we now cringe and crawl and then be coward and conquered by Nebuchadnezzar, the blasphemer of all people. Look at number one. Number one, there come courage of faith under fire. 
in uh, Daniel chapter 3, verse 16, verse 17. Uh, it says, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered and said, when somebody is afraid, you can see fear in, that, in their tone. When somebody is timid, you can see that timidity in their tone. And when somebody is frightened, you can, you can feel that uh, frightening in uh, their voice. But here, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, with their normal voice, with calmness, with coolness, without being afraid of anything or anyone, they said to the king of Nebuchadnezzar, we are not careful. We're not fearful. We're not fretting. We're not fretting. We're not afraid to answer thee in this matter. It says in verse 17, if it be so, our God, not your God, our God, our God, was saved, our God, was sanctified, and we've consecrated, committed our lives into the hands of the Lord, our God, whom we serve, our God is able. What can he not do? He opened the Red Sea, he is able. He brought down the walls of Jericho, he is able. He sank Pharaoh and all his chariots in the sea, he is able. He defeated Goliath, bragging that he'll destroy the whole of Israel with a little stone. What can not our God do? He is able to deliver us from the burning furry ponies, and he will deliver us out of thine hand, O king. He will deliver you. All those things that are, you know, roaming or roaring or whatever, it just, you know, the action of man, that's man, that's man. He knows, knows, uh, he has this uh, bread, but God can send an angel and destroy 185,000 soldiers of the Assyrian Empire in one night. If God can do that, God will conquer for you. And God will set you totally free from all those things that are trying to bring fear into your life in Jesus' name. In Philippians chapter 4, I'm reading from verse 6. In Philippians chapter 4, verse 6, it says, Be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your request be made known unto God. Then in verse 7, in verse 7, and the, and the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Jesus Christ. And the people of God said, Amen. Amen. Look at number two there. Number two, it says, is their constant conviction and fearlessness despite fury. Their constant conviction. You must have a conviction. Before the trial comes, have a conviction. Before the temptation comes, have conviction. This is what I will do, and this is what I will not do. This is how far I will go. This is how far I will not go. This is what I will uh, handle with that man. If it goes beyond that, no. This is how far I will go with my unbelieving relatives. If it goes beyond that, I will not. You must have that conviction before the trial, before their fury, and before all those things come to you. Their constant conviction and fearlessness despite fury. We've read already about, uh, let's, okay, let's look at it in Daniel chapter 3, verse 17. If it be so, our God, whom we serve, is able to deliver us from uh, the burning furry ponies, and he will deliver us out of thine hand, uh, O king. Before you go out in the morning, to meet all the challenges of life before you face anyone, a man, a woman, in life. Before you go out, settle in your mind, what can your God do? What can 
your God do? Because if you don't know what God can do, and you don't know he is able, how are you going to be able to endure? We're well, looking at Ephesians chapter 3, verse 19. Ephesians chapter 3, verse 19. Ephesians 3, 19. And to know the love of Christ, which passeth knowledge, that ye might be filled with all the fullness of God. When you are filled with the fullness of God, you will not tremble before any mortal man, no matter what he has, what he does, or what he can do. Because we are told in verse 20, in verse 20 it says now, unto him that is able, able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that worketh in us settle that at home before you go out don't avoid any appointment you have because that person is going to be there never don't avoid anybody you have to face because i know his mind i know his stature fear will rule your life and you'll not be able to achieve everything you ought to achieve. Don't avoid any challenge, any difficulty, any discomfort. Go understanding there is a power that worketh in you. And God is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that worketh in us. If you're going to continue being afraid, why did you pray? If you're going to continue being worried, why did you pray? If you're going to continue being anxious, why did you pray? If you're going to continue like a jellyfish, no backbone, and you're afraid of everything and everyone, if you're going to be avoiding what God has called you to do, why did you pray? But once you pray, you understand, my God is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that I ask or think according to the power that walketh in me. Look at verse 21, and then it says unto him, be glory in the church, not unto Nebuchadnezzar, be glory is a man of power, is a man of, you know, a great empire, unto God alone, who is able to deliver us, unto him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus throughout all ages, world without end. Amen. Look at number three here. Number three, we're looking at their clear consecration and faithfulness to the faithful. It's a faithful God because it's faithful to all the prophecies that have been uh, spoken uh, in the word of God. It's faithful to all the promises that he has given. It's faithful to all his people. All his people has assured them uh, that this is what he will do for them and world without end all ages all throughout until we get to eternity. Everything he has said, everything he has promised, everything he has ordained, everything will be done and Nebuchadnezzar will not change the promises of God. Nebuchadnezzar will not change the prophecy of the word. Nebuchadnezzar will not change the favor is going to have on the people of God. That's why, you know, you have your consecration. By the way, make your consecrations before you meet your, the powerful people of the world, the tyrants of the world, the tempters of the world. You see, the problem is if you don't make your consecration and know that here is where you stand and this is where you are going to stand before you meet those people, your prayers, your commitment, your vision and everything will be dependent on their personality because you are so much afraid of them. Let those consecrations be settled that this is what I will be in Christ, what I will do in Christ, and the way I will take my stand. When that is done, then you have faithfulness to the faithful. It tells us in Daniel chapter 3, verse 18, they said, but if not, be it known unto thee, O king, that we will not serve thy gods, nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up. 
I look at uh, First Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13. It says, There's no temptation taking you, but such as is common to all men. But God is faithful, who will not permit you, suffer you, allow you, and throw you into the hands of the tempter. He says he will not suffer you to be tempted more than ye above that ye are able. But will, with the temptation, also make a way to escape that ye may be able to bear it. Able to bear it. I said able to bear it. Able to bear it. It will make a way and you'll come out without the fire of Nebuchadnezzar having any effect on you in Jesus' name. You'll come out without the persecution, the trial, changing your personality, changing your stand, changing your commitment, changing everything you have told the Lord. I'm born again. I'm a child of God. This is the way I will live unto the Lord in total, complete, unreserved faithfulness to you all the days of my life. And then in verse 14, it says in verse 14, Wherefore, my dearly beloved, flee from idolatry. You know, whatever threats come, those idolaters will not be able to hurt you. Therefore, flee from idolatry. We're looking at 2 Timothy chapter 4, and we're reading from verse 18. 2 Timothy chapter 4, reading from verse 18, and the Lord shall deliver me from every evil work. That's all the amen you have. The Lord shall deliver me from every evil work and will preserve me unto his heavenly kingdom to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. Now, all the other Jews in Babylon, apart from Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who bowed to the idol, who cringed before the fearsome, fearful uh, Nebuchadnezzar. The question is, where are they today? All the people that changed their conviction when they were in Jerusalem, Judea, they were not worshipping any idol. They have been carried to captivity in Babylon. And then the threats and the trial and the pressure and the domination of Nebuchadnezzar made them to succumb and to surrender. If they didn't repent from that, where are they today? That's the question. But we know where Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, we know where they are today. They're in heaven. Well, they were the king of kings and the lord of lords because the lord delivered them literally that day that time the lord delivered them out of the bony furry ponies and now they've gone to heaven the lord has delivered them from the eternal lake of fire they are now in heaven we make a choice where we want to spend eternity and we don't allow anything of today, anything of the present time to make us bend and bow to the idols of the world, ideologies of the world, the pressures of the world, but to stand for God so that when our day will come, when our time will come, we'll get to heaven in Jesus' name. And the Lord will deliver you from every evil work. And the Lord will preserve you unto his heavenly kingdom and to our God, to our Lord, to our Savior, to our Redeemer, the glory, both now and forevermore in Jesus' name. Let's rise up now and take everything we've learned to the Lord in prayer. The Lord has taught us today and has reminded us how our lives ought to be what conviction we ought to have, what courage we ought to have, what kind of life we ought to have. Tell the Lord he gave Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego grace and strength to give you sufficient grace that you'll go through till the end of life. You'll not spend eternity 
away from God, you'll spend eternity in heaven in Jesus' name. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They make up, they made up their mind. They made up their mind. They are not going to yield to all the pressure from Nebuchadnezzar. This is the time for you to take a very strong decision with determination that come what may, I will follow Christ despite temptation or trial or any kind of threat from the devil. With conviction under trial. We have been told already in the word of God, there is no temptation taking you, but as is common to man, such as is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you, will not, will not permit you, will not, will not leave you alone, but he will, with the same temptation, make a way to escape. He made a way for, Nebuchadnezzar, for Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego to escape. They refused to bow down for the idol of Nebuchadnezzar. They were threatened. They were cajoled. It, it, it threatened them with death, with fire. But they made up their mind. Look at their declaration. They said, if it be so, if it be so, our God, whom we serve, is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace, and he will deliver us out of thy hand. As a prophet said, so it, 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 so it happened. They were delivered. Our God is still delivering people today. We are living in the last days when many temptations are coming right, left, and center. Have you just given your life to Christ? Temptation will come. Trial will come. People will try to put pressure on you to deny the faith or turn away from what you believe. You must make up your mind, I will not go back. I will not go back. The king wanted them to bow down. But they remember that the God they serve is a God who cannot, who, uh, who cannot be denied of their faith. And therefore they say, we will not bow down. We will not bend down. Today, the idols of today may not be like that of Nebuchadnezzar. The idol of money, the idol of fashion, the idol of society, and all those things that can put pressure on you. You have a decision to take. You have a mind to make that come what may, I will not bow down not, uh, to the idol of the land. Confession without regeneration. You see Nebuchadnezzar uh, com uh, confess that the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, the God of Daniel, is a great God. But it's not converted. The same thing today. There are many people, only they are, only they are religious, but they don't have a heart circumcision. They are not converted in their heart. And then the people will be telling you, this one is not too bad. This one is not too, it's not too much. Never, never yield to the temptation from the devil. Trials will come. Temptation will come. Make up your mind. I will not go back. I will not bend down. I will not fall. Remember Jesus told us, in the world, you will have a tribulation. But be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. You must make up your mind, no matter where the trouble is coming from, no matter where the, uh, the pressure is coming from, maybe from your family member, or from your boss in the office, or from a colleague in the campus, or for, uh, from a market woman like you, threatening you to, to slow down. Tell them, I have decided for Christ, there is no turning back.
There's no going back. There's no going back. No matter the threatening from the enemy, you must, you must make up your mind. Persecution will come, but you must maintain your conviction. You must put your trust in God. Pray, my brother, pray, because your own day of temptation is on the way. Trial will definitely come, but you must pray today that no matter how it comes, and when it comes and where it comes, I will not, I will not, I will not deny the Lord. Promise the Lord today that you will serve him with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and you will not compromise. You will not compromise. Compromise is gambling. Don't gamble your life by compromising to go back into sin. Don't gamble your faith. The end, the end of everything is in sight. These are the days when we should be ready for the coming of the Lord. Therefore, no matter what trial, no matter what threat coming from the devil, make up your mind, you will continue in the faith. Paul said, continue in the faith. Continue in the thing you have heard. It is only those who continue without compromise that will eventually make it to heaven. It's only those who stand for righteousness without compromise that will eventually enter into the kingdom of God. Make up your mind. You believe the Lord. You believe the word of God. Stay there. Remain there. Don't look back behind you. Remember, the wife of Lord was told, uh, they, they were told, don't look back. She looked back and she became a pillar of salt. Today, there are many things that may be put in pressure that you should turn back. You should go outside. Uh, you should not go back to the church. You must not uh, uh, go back to uh, this or that. Remember, you will not allow the enemy to pull you down. Pray that no compromise. Great trials with a great triumph. Remember, no matter the pressure from the enemy, no matter the pressure from your friend, you have believed and you want to serve the Lord to the very end. Never accommodate evil in your life. And don't gamble by compromise. Nebuchadnezzar wanted them to gamble their life, but they said, no, if it be so, the God who we serve is able to deliver us. The promise of God is very sure. If you stand and you don't compromise, God will see you through. Compromise is gambling. Don't forget, compromise is gambling. You must affirm your conviction. You must remain resolute and, 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 and decided that no matter the situation, I'm not going to look back. All these uh, heroes of faith, they made up their mind they are not going to go back. In the same way, you have just given your life to Christ, continue to the very end. Don't go back to, to the idol of the land, all the uh, pleasures of sin, reject them and turn away with a firm courage and with a, de and with a decided heart that you will not yield. The Lord will see you through. You need clear consecration. You need to be fearless in your decision. You need to be fearless in your consecration. You need to make up your mind. I draw a line. Here I stand for Christ. I will not go beyond. Here I stand for truth. I will not go back to error. Make up your mind. You need to, you need to tell the Lord that not, no matter what happens, the Lord is able to, st to stand by you. Remember, it's the, word in the, the promise in the word of God. He said, fear not and be not dismayed. I am with you. I, I am your God. I will keep you. I will protect you. I will preserve you. The God who has made that promise is a faithful God. Surely, he will see you through. Deliverance is sure for those who take their stand. The victory is sure for those who made up their mind, I will not go back to sin. I will not go back to evil. I will not go back to any societal evil. No compromise, no fear. No, no, don't allow anything to make you to be afraid. Remember, he's able to keep you from falling until the coming of the Lord. Make up your, your mind. Remember the promise of the Lord unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that worketh in us 
that God is able. I say God is able. I say God is able to keep you and to protect you. He kept, he kept uh, uh, the three Hebrew men, the heroes of faith, he will keep you as well. He will keep you as well. Remember what Peter and John told the, the council. They said, we rather obey God rather than man. In, in the world today, there are many things that are putting pressure. Remember, obedience to God will give you the victory. If you disobey, you you be the loser. Make up your mind. I will follow God till the very end. Constant conviction. Fearlessness despite the fury of the society. Clear consecration. Faithfulness to the faithful God. And decide never, never to go back. Remember, if it be so, our God is able to deliver us. Remember, he's able to deliver us from all the evil that may come around, no matter where, where you are, where, where, where you are residing, or those who are surrounding you, remember God is there where you are. Make up your mind. You are going to follow him to the very end. The Lord shall deliver me. You say that to yourself. The Lord shall deliver me from every evil work. He delivers Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and will preserve me unto his heavenly glory. He will preserve you to his heavenly glory, to whom be glory forever and ever. And let the church say, Amen. Our God is alive. Our God is alive. He can do it. He will do it. He has done it before. He will do it again. Let's close our eyes to pray together. Let's call upon the Lord together for what he has spoken to us today. We, do, we are not going to yield to pressure. We are not going to yield to all the intimidation of the devil, but we are going to remain calm, calm, and, and, and a decision and an affirmation to follow the Lord until the very end. Our Father, we thank you tonight. You have, yielded, you have, you have opened the scriptures unto us. We see the faith of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. We see their courage. We see their conviction. We see their confession. We see their affirmation. We see their fearlessness. I pray all these things, you will, you will help every one of us to remain, to be like them, and to confess our faith without fear in Jesus' name. We thank you because you are a gracious God. This word you have, you have taught us tonight will keep us until the very end in Jesus' name. We thank you for our Father in the Lord who has given us the, uh, uh, the wholesome word, the undiluted word, the truth that will set many people free. I pray you preserve him and you continue to use him for your glory. And it will never be weak, but you're getting stronger and stronger, stronger and stronger in Jesus' name. We thank you because you have answered our prayer. The rest of this week, oh Lord, let this word of God make us to remember how to take our stand and refuse to compromise. You will, not, yeah, you will not be a compromiser. I will not be a compromiser in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, because you have answered all over the world. The world, This world has gone everywhere. I pray that we will stand together till the very end. Thank you, Lord, because you have answered our prayer. For in Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. God bless you and continue in the love of God.
Rest sinners. Rest is healed. There is no salvation in any other, and there's no name given among Some men by which like we can be saved except the name of this Jesus. Why did they give me this kind of name? Paul, who had been part because of them, this is what I know it means. Among the people that carry I don't like of the name to persecute well, Christians, his eyes were opened, like and his mind was enlightened, and he Paul, said, the case This is the way. You. This Jesus of this Christ that I preach unto you, you is do any he, other the only the name. Savior, and yet Adam you need to understand. Eve Look at that verse 39 again. That name on you. by him, all who society looking at who from you all are, things, how you live in the, could not in the be private, in the public, they the could put Moses, that name 40, on you. Beware, therefore. Let that come upon your own you, character which is looking up the prophets, that name the that that's your name despises and wonder and perish. society behold everyone that ye knows who you are and what they what know you hear, your action you wonder, and they know and your character they are firm that that you is perish your while name walking, walk in your days a walk which if you don't like it, no one believes the name. So a man and Christ has come to you. Why would you not believe it? Will change I can't that see. name. I'm, I can't see what you are saying. Christ seeing. has come. I can't comprehend the what you are saying. Visitor, and the heavenly visitor, redeemer, everywhere. has come. Let's that come upon you. And God God walks tonight, in walking he changes your days, what which you shall not believe. Even Heaven though a man will not call you that name anymore. Look at verse 45. God will not call you that name anymore. The multitudes, and Christ that converts and conveys that and new name, things, it will not call you the old name in sin anymore in Jesus' and name. Paul the Apostle explained everything to them. He revealed and when you kneel down to pray any time, he was time. passionate about their the salvation. Heavenly Father he was will look at you. God will open they their will not eyes call you and they will see the, the truth instead of their eyes no being heritage opened. In heaven. They were contradicting and they spoke blasphemy. They were Verse 46, but Paul tonight. and Barnabas they were both your life tonight. and said, it was necessary We're looking at the that Mark the word of chapter God two. I'm reading from verse one. And be spoken unto you. Mark chapter but two, verse one. He put and again, he from entered you, into Capernaum after some days, and of it was noise that That's what he was is in the house. They, they judged come themselves. They counted themselves. They counted themselves among the people that are unworthy of everlasting and then in life. And two, Lo, it says in verse 2, and straight away, that means immediately many were gathered together in so much that there the was no room to receive them. No, not so much to as the about the door to replace and you in Jesus' name. Tonight them. we're looking at the message supernatural recovery from spiritual when he speaks, it's different from when recovery the poor man on the street spiritual speaks. blindness. Three points we're looking at. Number one, when the, the grace of heaven and earth and speaks, it's different from the creature speaking. Blindness. The word retouch is something to draw somebody if back. It speaks to even to the slow of somebody life. down. He wants to and move forward, peace, but because still, he's blind, he has there will be immediate response from the sea, slower, from the roaring of the sea, because the sea, retarded, the sky, the, the forest, the, the ocean, the man, the demon, two, anyone the he speaks to cannot resist the word for religious blindness. The most terrible blindness somebody can have is religious blindness. What word if will you say your speech about material things, about commerce, what about word science, with about a healer knowledge, speak about things around you Healing that world. are not eternal? What it's word bad, with royalty with the king speak? But when you become blind spiritually, royal word, religiously, word. 
and you take what, what good will it deliver us be good for evil and you take a delivering word for darkness and you say it's terrible because there's nothing the to save unto them. such a man, such a woman. The danger the word and you are the hearing damnation is this word. for religious blindness. Point number three. Saving word. Our decision. Healing word. For deliverance. Deliverance word. Redemptive word. Blindness. When you hear that, it goes blindness. into your heart. Somebody has been blind. And everything but you understand that needs to be done for your salvation, salvation will our happen mind, to you. Our soul our heart it can reverse look at verse 3 the condition of blindness in verse 3 as they come blindness. unto but he him decision, bringing one our decision of the palsy which was born of God. from reversible blindness let's come to number one number one so we'll the description the and degrees the place was already filled up before they came uh, let, let's go back to and Genesis, this man had lies and impotent and worthless and useless to himself he couldn't do anything for himself for men carried him on his stretcher one at every corner the total man in genesis chapter 19 reading from verse and came 11 late. and the man didn't say we can lay there's no seed the take me back home of the house with blindness when for small you are and great honest. so that the weary when you know this is the final the point of call what had happened here is god when you know today something to must happen and those two angels came to the house of Lord. You're not allowed and the crowd came to hinder you. Judgment. It was you're not allowed the, the challenges to stop you and be in your was way. The night before what did they the do? judgment of Look fire and brimstone will be rained upon Sodom and Gomorrah. And then those men, the Sodomites, they came to the house of the Because of the press, because of the crowd, because of the multitude, they want to know them. Not the just know them and see them panic. officially. They wanted to commit Sodom with them. While they were doing that, problem. Lord said, don't do like this. This is wickedness. These are heavenly guests. These are not ordinary people from another town here on They earth. went and uncovered they the room. They came from on high. Where and they said, he was. Don't worry about that. We what want to know them. Say and we're going to defile them. So that kind and of so action. And just smote them and with blindness. Who want to solve their problem that very time. Great, they don't even care. Though they, were they don't mind. And what the they miracle of judgment came upon them right there. They were still searching for the door. How many people look at us? How did they feel? How would they feel they about us? And these people. people don't to think get about into defilement so by all how means. They, they came for now, miracle, miracle, they blinded. must have. Their hearts have been blinded. Look at verse 12. And the men said unto the Lord, And when they had broken it up, they let down the bed, wherein the and thy daughters, of and whatsoever thou hast in the city, bring them out of this place. For we shall destroy this tonight. place. There was and no say, argument, and there me. was no kind of doubt the about it. We shall destroy this place the because must heal me. the cry of the deliverance must great deliver me. Before the the redeemer of the must redeem me. And the, and the king that came from heaven is the must one draw a we blessing to destroy from heaven it. upon my and life. Lord went out and he speak. Unto his son's sin law, Look at verse which five. marriage is daughters. In verse 5, when and Jesus up, saw get their you out faith. of this place, but the Lord faith? will destroy. Coming Look at that. The, the Lord city. will destroy. What's faith? Uh, there is no doubt Refusing about this. This one to is give no up. suggestion. And this What's one is faith? no supposition. Being honest and saying today, today is the day of my salvation. As one that mocks 
unto his son saying, Lord, you know, they, they were blind. They were blind. They were blind. And they, they had had never seen him Lord say anything, anything like this, this before. before. I am and yet, and their minds, their hands And some people say, okay, so leave it there. Leave it there. I remain in my paralysis. You will not remain in your paralysis. Eventually, came out. And the two daughters came out, and the wife also tried to come out. And then she they saw back. their face. She was blind to you spiritually. What ordinary and people a will not do. They and will so the and place go more and come destroyed by fire. Any other chance, any Why? Other day, then they will come. They blind. And these people the one don't was talk there. like that. Oh, get you out. There's Thank no you time you to pastor. waste. Praise the Lord. Isaiah chapter 59. Looks like you are expecting Isaiah something wonderful, extraordinary today. Isaiah 59, verse 8. The way of peace they know not, and there is no judgment in their goings. The people who do whatever they do, the people who say whatever they say, and there is no justice. There's no thoughtfulness. They just move on. They just talk. They just act. They just do whatever they do. They have made them crooked paths. Whosoever goes therein shall not know peace. Somebody does something now. He loses or she loses his peace or her peace. The following day, she does the same thing again. Somebody does something now. And all peace and sexual mind is gone. There's condemnation. There's a confusion. The following week, he does the same thing. It says, therefore, judgment is far from us. Neither does justice overtake us. We wait for the light, but behold, obscurity for brightness. But we walk in darkness. We grope for the wall like the blind. This were Israelites. And they were religious. And yet they said, we're looking for the light. The light is in the world. The world is the light. Your word is a lamp unto my pathway. And yet we grope for the wall like the blind. And we grope as if we had no eyes. We stumble at noonday as in the night. We are in desolate places as dead men. Lamentation chapter 4, the condition of these people and their blindness, spiritual blindness, retarded them, drew them back. The place they could have got to, the lens they could have reached, and the glory that could have come to them, the spiritual blindness of their mind, of their heart, hindered them. In Lamentation chapter 4, I'm reading from verse 14. Lamentation chapter 4, reading from verse 14. They have wandered as blind men in the streets. They just wander about, roam about. There is no goal. There is no destiny. They are not asking themselves, why am I here? Why am I in the world? What am I created for? What am I supposed to do? Where am I going? How did yesterday go? How did last month go? How did last year pass away? How is this year going? They are thoughtless about their lives. And it says they have wandered as blind men in the streets. It says they have polluted themselves with blood so that men could not touch their garments. They cried unto them. Depart ye, it is unclean. Depart, depart, touch not. When they, should, they fled away and wandered, they said among the heathen, they shall no more sojourn there. The anger of the Lord has divided them. He will no more regard them. They pray and God doesn't pay attention. They have their religious feats, and God does not pay attention. And they have their religious fasting, and God does not regard them. They go on their Sabbath day to go and worship, 
and God doesn't regard them. Everything they did, God just uh, turned his eyes away. They respected not the person of the priest, even the priest that will try and show them. Look at the way. Look at salvation. Look at eternal life. Look at how to amend your ways. Look at how to repent. And look at how you will seek the Lord, and the Lord will have mercy on you. They respected not the person of the priest. They favored not the elders. As for us, our eyes as yet filled for our vain help. In our watching, we have watched for a nation that could not save us. I come into Romans, New Testament now, talking about the blindness of the people, the blindness of the religious, and um, the blindness of those who think they see, and yet they see nothing. Romans chapter 1, verse 21. Because that when they knew God, they glorified him not as God. They knew God, they glorified him not as God. If you knew a great man, how will you respect and honor that great man? You put a difference between your action to the lowly and your action to the great man. And they knew God as the creator of heaven and earth as the possessor of heaven and earth, as the owner of all things, and yet they did glorify him as God, neither were they thankful. They became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish thoughts was darkened. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools, and they changed the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like to corruptible man and to birds and to four-footed bees and to creeping things. They worship idols and you'll be surprised as the word of God is very clear and very plain. You will not make any idol of anything that looks like man on earth, of the fish, of the bird in the sky. There are people that have gone to the highest of schools and they have read all the literature of Shakespeare and of other writers, and they understand them, and they even teach them. And yet they come to the Bible, they see the plain word of God, they remain in places of worship filled with idols, idols outside the church building, idols in the church building, the idol, the image of so-and-so, and the image of such-and-such, we're talking about people that might even be professors of English language, and yet they cannot see that this is against the word of God. What's that? That's blindness. Go on in verse 24, wherefore God also gave them up to uncleanness through the lust of their own hearts to dishonor their own bodies between themselves who changed the truth of God into a lie. And they worshipped and served the creature more than the creator, who is blessed forever. Amen. And there are millions and millions of people. Whenever they want to do something, their question is, what if the policeman catches me? They fear the policeman more than they fear God. They never think, what if God challenges me on this? What if God will question me on this? Is the policeman they're afraid of? Other people, they will say, what if the government sees me doing this, hears me doing this? What will the government do? They think of government, they never think about God. Other people, they say, I'm doing, if my husband gets to know what will happen, they think of their husband, they never think about God. This way I'm going, I hope my wife does not hear this. I don't want my wife to know this. 
even because you know my wife has hypertension and if she hears what I'm doing with this other lady hypertension will shoot up and she might die just collapse like that they think of what their wives will say they never think about what God will say other people what if the pastor will hear this one I hope the pastor will not see through this. He will not see that I am the one doing this. I am the one doing that. They fear their pastor more than they fear God. Look at the verse 25. A spiritual blindness. A person that will not think about God. God sees me. God knows me. God will judge this. They are only thinking about man, about the creature who changed the truth of God into a lie and worshiped and served the creature more than the creator who is blessed forever, amen. In verse 26, for this cause God gave them up to vile affections, for even their women did change the natural use into that which is against nature. Likewise, also the men Leaving the natural use of the women, they burnt in their laws one toward another. Men with men, homosexuality, lesbianism, men with men walking that which is unseemly and receiving to themselves that recompense of their error which was meet. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind, a depraved mind, a blind mind, to do those things which are not convenient, being filled with all unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, debate, deceit, malignity, whisperers, and you think that such people never go to a place of worship. Yes, they do, they do, they do. And they are regular, and they are hearing everything the word of God is saying, but it never penetrates their heart. The thick darkness in their heart and the blindness of their mind. It says they are backbiters, haters of God, despiteful, they are proud, boasters, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents without understanding. They're covenant breakers. They're without natural affection. Natural affection, implacable, unmerciful, who knowing the judgment of God, that they which commit such things are worthy of death, not only do the same, but they have pleasure in them, that do them is blindness, spiritual blindness in Ephesians chapter 4. Ephesians chapter 4, reading from verse 17. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 17. This I say, therefore, and testify in the Lord that she henceforth walk not as other Gentiles walk. In the vanity of their mind, vanity, darkness, deception of their mind. There are people that claim to be saved, born again. And if you talk to them, or they say, Yes, I'm your brother, I'm your sister, I'm born again like you are born again. But you know what? They are still walking as other Gentiles walk. And they don't see anything wrong in that. They talk like other Gentiles on sage. They fight like other Gentiles on sage. They commit sin regularly, normally. It's their habitual life as other Gentiles do. And they walk in the vanity of their mind. They can curse. They can blaspheme. They can make jest of the word of God like other Gentiles do. And when you talk to them, they say, oh, I'm born again, born again. Uh, if I had time, I'd even follow you to do evangelism. I'm just like you are. But look at verse 18. Uh, having their understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God 
through the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their heart. You're telling them this is not the way of a born again child of God. They cannot see. You're telling them, have you not read? Have you not seen? Are we not holding the same Bible? They cannot see because of the blindness of their heart who being past feeling. They don't have any feelings anymore. Their consciences are dead and they can hurt somebody. They can injure somebody and they can trample on somebody and they don't have any feeling. They just uh, do it and laugh and go their way. And they claim to be children of God who being past feeling um, have given themselves over to lasciviousness to walk all uncleanness with his greediness. I pray the Lord will keep our eyes open. We will not be blind. I will not remain blind. Point number two now, the danger and the damnation for religious blindness. Somebody is religiously blind. He knows that he's been in this religion and in this path of religion and in this way of life for years and nothing has ever changed. And now you bring real salvation message to him or to her. And she's so blind 